Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this week's edition of Luke Covers, because the realm of the fantasy land, and I don't just mean the fantasy land inside the head of every modern feminist, I mean the actual world of fantasy fiction out there, the ones we see, such as the works of Tolkien or George R. R. Martin. Well, one has certainly been doing better than the other and continues to do better. I mentioned the House of the Dragon, which, yes, either good or bad does benefit a lot from simply having the Rings of Power to compare it to, but also it legitimately seems to be trying by comparison to actually have a real show that is maintaining a canon that is also giving an audience or something of its own to really come in and see and enjoy. Hence why now it's nice to see Matt Smith actually get something of a big role in the wake of the chaos that his uh, post-Doctor Who career has been with Terminator Genesis and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and all this other stuff. Now he's got something here with House of the Dragon, and that's good for him because I, I think I mentioned before, but I liked his uh, starring role on Doctor Who better than David Tennant of the, of the ones in the modern era's run. He was the one I liked the most, and he was the one that I wanted to see do the most in a, after leaving the show. And it took a while, but he finally got there because, well, he's been trying and trying and trying. And unlike your average type, you know, your Brie Larson type or your Brie Larson fangirls, who are supposed to be, who think that they're supposed to be perfect at everything, and if they lose, it's considered, it is some kind of real victim of the patriarchy crap. Well, not for the case of Smith. He kept going and going and going. He's the, the anti-Serena Williams, where every time she would lose, which was an awful lot in the last decade, it was treated like a national tragedy, and I know ESPN is probably pulling to make the day she retired into a national holiday because she is there. Jonestown has more openness for three, free thought and disagreeing with a figurehead than they do with ESPN and worshiping Serena Williams. But that's neither here nor there. We're here for the House of the Dragon. In particular, something I saw about the House of the Dragon, some criticism going against it about the recent episode, yes, episode six, where they did a big time jump. And I remember d during the most of the years of Matt Smith as Doctor Who, they would do a thing where they would have the C a series in two halves. And they would almost be like another season premiere. Well, they seem to have done something like that now, again, with another Matt Smith production with House of the Dragon, where the new episode does a big time jump and there's character changes and all that. And it seems that the time jump actually has been taken well by the, the viewers, which really is what matters. When it comes to people these days, this day and age, we honestly and rightfully do not trust the quote unquote professional critics out there. We know that they have so many people that they've got to answer to that whatever opinion they have, that's not really their opinion. It's a filtered opinion. It's going to be something that conforms to either what is editorial and of course editorial is whatever is the politically correct dogma out there being jammed down our throats. It's whatever a sponsor has to say. It's whatever some kind of backhanded connection to said sponsor has to say. There's a reason they deserve to be called the access media because they want to keep having access. They want to keep being allowed to these press junkets with these shows and these movies. Of course, they're not going to say anything that's going to upset the studio or upset a particularly powerful producer. And then out they go in there and then it's going to be completely no access for them because that's what they need. But with people out there online, if when you look at that and you look at either a nerd rotic, you look at an as, you look at Razor Fist, whomever, the fact that they're answering to their fans and also whatever sort of opinion they have, they will honestly and directly say it out loud, as opposed to the truly arrogant conceited jackasses out there in those mainstream press outlets who you damn well know that they're more interested in their personal agenda than they really are in telling you anything truthful telling you the truth in any capacity, but they're going to still go out there and actively deny it. And the best you'll ever get out of them is to say that somehow their quote unquote opinionating is a good thing because that political motivation is more important than anything that actually involves a real honest to God self-generated opinion. But enough about Jim Sterling. You have a world now where it really should be a matter of competition. They, and by they, I mean those newspapers, those magazines that would say whatever was the opinion, and that was the only public, publicly recorded opinion of you know this film or this TV show. 
Yes, they had no competition, but now they've got how the internet has democratized all of it. So you look at that world, you look at that, and you look as a professional critic and say there's more traffic going towards a YouTube channel that has the exact opposite opinion of this show you're living to defend because shilling – or you're out there and you just can't stand that somebody is doing the same job without all the rigmarole and out all the studio-related ass kissery, and they are actually honestly getting a better, better job being done. And also, they're doing it while really, really not being compromised. I know there's a lot of jackasses out there who want to project their own insecurities, Frost style, and saying, "Oh, those people are lying," or "Those internet critics, those types, oh, they're just shit." They're just trolls. They're just saying these things, these negative things. Oh, they're just doing it for the money. They're just doing it to get clicks. Oh, they don't really care. They don't really have these opinions. Oh, they're a, like, like somebody on one video I did recently called me a left wing plant. Uh, nope, nope. But anybody who says that, remember, it's the same old saying of Democrats are already guilty of that which they currently are accusing you. Yeah, the next time some show media collider type of person is saying uh, uh, that a nerd Roddick or an Az or Nina Infinity or that Star Wars girl, oh, they're just being grifters. No, it's really a matter of they can't stand somebody being more successful than them. Okay. And that's exactly what is coming through the mouth of this one critic with the House of the Dragon crying about there being a birthing scene and trying to direct and directly even saying in the text that what matters more is the personal politics. What matters is the political machinations. Uh, no. Okay. This is Game of Thrones. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Well, I'm assuming you would have since you're supposed to be a long running professional critic. So you would have known about this show already. You would have known about it without knowing the background of the George R. R. Martin novel series, but still how much that really, at least for most of the run, went towards maintaining what was on the show. Yes, you would know this essence of the franchise. You would know things like that. And of course, I can't help but wonder, these are the same kind of pathetic critics who went out there and defended the Red Wedding, because of course, you know, anything that involves ripping a fetus out, violently removing a fetus in this day and age where we've got a full court press of ass wipes defending a fat, crazy bitch like Stacey Abrams for saying that the heartbeat you see, a heartbeat that you hear for, uh, six weeks into a pregnancy is a manufactured sound. Of course, they're the kind of people who a birth that's seen, a just a natural childbirth that's shown as being painful and horrible. And instead of looking at even in this day and age with all the medical advancements we've made out there, still childbirth, yes, the miracle of childbirth is still also a very, very painful experience. And there's still, it doesn't happen anywhere near as much as it did before, but it's still a situation where a a woman could die in that situation, dying in childbirth. It could happen. It is a horrible thing to see. And that's why you need honest to God doctors, not Fauci, to go out there and really be the best trained and the most educated and the best equipped to go ahead and do this. If it's in a hospital, if it's an at-home birth, if it's a situation where you're being coached through the birth on the phone from 911, if you're, say, you're stuck in you're stuck in some kind of traffic jam and uh, the baby's coming or if it's a situation where you're stuck in an elevator or something like that and the baby's coming, yes, we need that expertise to help them out to make sure that goes and moves and happens and happens successfully. So the baby and the mother are okay, you know, the anti-red wedding. And maybe that's why people in the shill sites, whether it's these websites, you know, your Mary Sue's or Collider's or, you know, the, the papers, whether it be a Hollywood Reporter, whether it be a hell, even a Variety or a, even Vogue would we'll talk about this stuff. And you notice the certain words that they prefer to see or that they prefer to talk about. Hence, uh, this article talking about political machinations or, of course, talking about uh, a woman cutting men's tongues out for betraying her. Can't help but notice that is what they is that that is what they're actively saying. Yes, even saying the audience is more preferable towards seeing a woman cut men's tongues out or have men's tongues cut out for betraying her. No, that's what sadistic bastards like you want to see because you're a bunch of deranged, vindictive narcissists who want to have everything be a power fantasy for you ha not having a father growing up or you were denied a boyfriend in high school. Okay, okay, sweetheart. We can smell that shit from a mile away. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure projection. Everything I accuse you, I'm already guilty of. Hands down, baby. 
it is all pure garbage. And it can't help but notice the same people who screech about violence, if it's a certain way that does not fit politically correct dogma, if it's, say, a woman being shown as vulnerable, a female character getting hit, if it's some kind of you know, movie from 30 years ago that they expect to conform to their current year political correctness, and it doesn't do that, you show them a movie like Miss 45 or I Spit on Your Grave, and they want to have that film removed from any streaming services, want it to be never referred to, they want to have it erased. Raced. But this situation where it's okay if it's a woman that is having a man's tongue get cut out, if it's some narcissistic, sociopath, power-hungry bitch going and manipulating people, and particularly manipula manipulating men, and getting them to be slaughtered and slaughtered by the masses, suddenly you are perfectly fine. But it's okay because you pretend to can, that you're on the right side of history. And it's going back to it, just like in the world of Game of Thrones, reminds me of this one hilarious meme I saw where it was a, the capture was how, what white people think of themselves when they uh, virtue signal. And the meme that was attached to a photo, it was a still from that time that Daenerys was crowd surfing the group of black people who were calling her mother because they are the types who honestly believe that they are important. They don't need to prove themselves to be important. They can just say they are because they follow the right political dialogue and then have the balls to say Trump supporters or that people who disagree with them politically are the brainwashed cultists. Uh, yeah, uh, you're wrong. But then again, remember, you motherfuckers can't help yourselves but try to force the world into being punished for not thinking your way and or, and, or forcing them into thinking your way. Well, uh, unfortunately... Unlike the country you wish you were living in, or you wish this country is more like China, yeah, this is a free country, so we are not going to listen to you at all for anything other than to mock you within an inch of your life. That's a reason why we are legitimately surprised, and in this day and age, anything produced in a mainstream outlet will take what we can get. So something like House of the Dragon has something that is uh, making little entitled jackanapes like you upset instead of giving you what you want and thus your other favorite hobby of defending crap that does conform to your dogmatic country like house of the like a uh, rings of power not house of the dragon we're gonna go and continue to mock the fuck out of that and also people like you we're gonna monetize your hive-minded stupidity we're gonna go and in one way or another make sure that we get a good time and have a better time profiting off of you than any of this garbage does and actually what's supposed to be an entertainment outlet whether it's simply those who are the anti-pc anti-corporate shill equivalents to a BuzzFeed or an IGN or a Collider or even a Hollywood Reporter. And we're also going to go out there and maybe produce our own forms of entertainment, our own series, our own this or that novel series, role-playing games, what have you, that are going to be much, much better than what you've got because we are truly unbidden by the same kind of shackles that you people have to deal with of incessantly answering to this person or that person instead of the only people you ever should really in any creative field really have to respond to the fans they're the ones that are truly supposed to be creating and your paychecks they're the ones manufacturing that stuff I know you all are increasingly dependent upon ESG funding, but that's only going to be keeping you around for so long. And then eventually that stuff's going to be all gone. Or, of course, the old fashioned, no matter what you do to try and please that beast, social justice psychopaths are a completely blood hungry hive mind. And they're going to do everything they can to have you destroyed. They just they do not stop. You cannot appease them. You can throw as many pieces of meat at the crocodile as you want. Eventually, you're going to run out of pieces of meat, and you're still going to be standing there. And the gator is still going to be hungry and will devour you. So that's what we're doing. We see that gator, and we get out our rifle instead of trying to appease it. And what am I going to be doing specifically to have my own equivalent to profiting from these idiots doing what they do but better and also far more long-lasting, far more evergreen? I, of course, am, have been showing you the whole time. This little lady I've been drawing right here, my very own fantasy comic, yes, her name is Tanya, Lady of the Blade, and that is going to be the name of the comic as well. 
I mentioned this before, but the plan is to make it the usual structure. What is it going to be like? What's the elevator pitch? Well, a fantasy novel in comic book form. Yes, if you specifically want the story, then the story revolves around our little lady right here to whom was slain a warrior captured, forced into slavery, sex slavery, sl was murdered by a John and brought back to life by a deal with God to slay a million sinners to f redeem her soul. And yes, this is planning on being the first in a series of this because this really is truly inspired by not the works of Tolkien or even George R. R. Martin, but the more plot and lead character driven kind of fantasy pulp stories along the likes of the fantasy legend Michael Moorcock, to whom is a name you probably have never heard of. And now that I just told you his name, you're probably laughing or giggling in some way or another. And I understand. Yes, that is not a name he made up. That is his legal name and he hasn't changed it. I don't know why, but okay. And even in that world of him being a more influential character than the general public knows, because little things you'll notice, like even George R. R. Martin himself has put in little tributes and references to the work of Moorcock, including a scene from Game of Thrones where the little boy prince is displaying a sword and asks people to give it a name. Such a great sh sword should have a name. What should I call it? And of the names you can hear from the crowd, one of them is yelled out Stormbringer, the name of the living soul-sucking sword that Moorcock's most famous fantasy character, Elric of Milne Bonnet, was to have wielded throughout the entire run of those stories. Short stories and the sextet of novels and that was the original cycle. There have been subsequent Elric novels and stories since then, but the main cycle is the main six, okay? Or other characters, uh, Lee protagonists, Robert E. Howard, but darker even than him kind of characters. That is what I want Tanya to be in the tradition of. The tradition of a Solomon Kane, a Conan the Barbarian, a Coram, a, uh, I mentioned Elric of Mel de Bonnet, even Cull the Conqueror. Those types, she will now be in that canon with them. That is what my goal is for. Yes, as we see her begin her quest of slaying a million souls in the name of redemption. And the story will be at the minimum of 48 pages. That seems to be a good run because I really want content-wise, structure-wise, this to be like a comic, a, the kind of fantasy comics you see out of France. I really am a strong advocate of the bande dessinée, as is the French word for comics, and doing something more like them like a sleek, self-contained story that is uh, like the dimensions of your American graphic novel and has the kind of multi-issue arc you get in trades from American monthly titles, but doing it all in one convenient story so you don't have to worry about the you know, month upon month of going to the shop for the next issue. That is the idea. And stretch goals are planned. Of course, this being a fantasy story, there is the concept of a map. A map of the world is a prerequisite for any kind of original fantasy creation dimension. If it's in comics, if it's in a tabletop role-playing game, even if it comes to you know, movies or novels, I, I would say. So yes, the world, the realms that uh, you will see Tanya travel through as she's going through and conquering or slaying and all that, there will be a map included as well. But one of the stretch goals will be that the map will be printed as a in a cloth map form the initial will be there is it will include a map but in a map that is more of a little small fold out poster that will show the world of course but when it comes to stretch goals the first major stretch goal would be to have it 48 pages and printed in hardcover because yes those sleek nice uh, sturdy long lasting looks good on your shelf hardcovers for the French comics, whether fantasy, science fiction, what have you, yes, that's the first goal, the real first stretch goal. Then it would be, the next stretch goal would be to have 12 additional pages. Yes, yeah, so to make it a 60-page comic in hardcover. And then there will be, also the earlier stretch goal will include making the map cloth after we get past the 12 additional pages. And the major, major last big stretch goal of the moment that I'm explaining to you that has been preordained will be to have it done in a format where it will be actually large format. Instead of the usual 7.5 by 10 kind of comic book shape, I will make it in a shape, in a size where it is of the larger print that you see, the larger printing size you see of French comics. If you go now, since the great people over at Titan Comics and also French comic publishers now tracking down and getting their own English translations of their own work, 
printed and made for Americans since I can't read French myself. That will be there for you to go and see, but that is a goal, one goal at a time. And remember, I do have artwork available, preliminary artwork, promotional artwork, character designs and all that already done for you to go and see and already they are for sale. So thank you for watching. And if you want to go and support the work, support the channel, key, uh, get the word of Tanya put out there besides all of the subscribing and the liking and the sharing. And remember, check if you're still subscribed if you're a returning viewer. There is my Square store. That is the first link in the description below. You'll find my store where there's my pen and ink illustrations for 25 bucks. My color drawings are 20 bucks. My sketchbooks are 25 bucks. And you can also go there and I've got coffee sleeve super babes. Yes, little coffee sleeve art, $7.50. Or you can commission me as well. Commissions are for a pen and ink piece are 50 bucks plus shipping. A color commission is 25 bucks plus shipping. Or you can commission a trading card. Trading card commissions are 20 plus shipping, and they are the last item you will see in my coffee. The illustrations for the the trading card commissions are the last item you'll see in my coffee sleeve super babes category. And besides that, do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that I do have also separate categories for my my Tanya illustrations and my Tanya color drawings. And that includes, yes, some promotional illustrations that are done and they are done on the Kansen brand fanboy comic book Bristol board. So those are done as full illustrations with full background and all that. Those, due to their size, to the special paper used, they are in a larger size. They, they are on a higher price, I mean, than those other ones. They, those promotional illustrations are 75 bucks plus shipping. So for, do not forget, whatever you buy, if you get one or several things, it only comes with a flat shipping and handling fee of $5. And also, whether you are here or there or anywhere, anyone around the world, you can simply donate any dollar amount you would like to support me. Donations can are the first thing you see in my store. And remember, any amount from in any denomination around the world. And if you get one or several things, yes, that flat $5 shipping and handling fee is there. But if you live outside of America, since my store can't receive orders for items outside of the USA, you would have to go and make your order as a donation. Simply add up the total of prices of what you want, include and yeah, do that, take that, include another $25 for the international shipping handling fee, make that donation, and your items will ship immediately, just like it would for anyone in America. So until then, thank you all for watching. Remember, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.